you can see, the one and only Dan Riskin joins us for a weekly look in the world of science and tech. Dan, good to see you again. Great I to know see it you. was a, a heartbreaking weekend, but I hope uh, you had a good time yeah. Halloween with the kids and whatnot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I got to love Halloween. It was mm -hmm. a lot of emotions this weekend. Yeah. There were when you have kids in the house, all the emotions are amplified, oh, right? Gosh. That's very true. And for Especially the kids. overtired kids from yes. watching late games two oh, days in yeah. a row and everything else. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. A there was a crying. whole lot going yeah. on. Yeah. A lot of tears. But that's not what we're here to talk about emotions. We're here to talk about science, Dan. You take the emotion out of science. No, there's no emotion. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but this is interesting about, you know, anti-facial recognition glasses, they're actually a thing, which is interesting because facial recognition makes a lot of things easy. Like, yes. you know, open up my phone, oh, I don't need a password, it recognizes my face. Yeah. I don't have to remember right. a million passwords. But some people don't like this. Yeah, so what's interesting to me about this story is the fact that it's what's being marketed. It's not so much whether it works, whether it doesn't work, how it works. I think it's just interesting that glasses companies see an, uh, uh, an mm -hmm. opportunity in the market to take away the ability of these devices to recognize you. Hmm. And that the fact that that is a selling point tells you something about what people are looking for and what their concerns are. But yeah. these glasses are from a company called Zenni. And it, I mean, all it is is uh, infrared blockers on the lenses. They, they tint a little bit pink, but when your phone, when you hold your phone up to your face, it uses yeah. infrared to recognize ah. your face. And so if you're block, if you're wearing those glasses, it can't unlock because it can't see your eyes. Ah. And like if somebody took a picture of you and uploaded it to the internet, they could use facial recognition that way. Like it doesn't mm -hmm. stop everything, mm. yeah. but okay. it does prevent a phone from being used. And so why this would, you can think of how this would make your life less convenient, but you can think of all the times that you step up to a bank machine or, mm. or you step yeah. into a mall or a store, yeah. and they might be trying out different technologies, and you might yeah. just not be consenting to that and would like to have some glasses that were So protected. these aren't Marx Brothers glasses, then? These right. are definitely... Right, right, right. Yeah, these, yeah. Are, yeah. These, are, these are... I mean, I think the fact that they're saying we can get more people to buy these if instead of calling it anti-IR, we're calling it anti-facial recognition. Yeah, interesting. Okay. You can, that's, that says a lot. Yeah. It's almost like those, uh, those covers people buy to put on their license plate to avoid the, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the yeah, toll cameras, camera, yeah. the yeah. speed cameras, yeah, yeah. okay? Very interesting stuff totally. for your face. Uh, and Dan, a new study finds that using night lights releases your heart uh, heart attack risk by 42%. It increases oh, your, it increases, yeah, no, that might, Sorry. Be a, it might be my fault. Raises so your maybe you should put your risk. glasses on. Yeah, yeah, I know, I need yeah. some glasses this yeah. morning. So this Sorry. is interesting because for this study, they had 89,000 adults in the UK all over the age of 40, and all they did was give them a wrist monitor that measures how light it is, and they mm -hmm. wore it for a week straight, day and night. And they got measurements of how bright the room is that these people are sleeping in. Okay. And they tracked these people for a decade. And heart attacks up, up like on the order of 50%. What? Right? Like crazy what? numbers. Heart disease, uh, heart attacks, myocardial infarction, all these science words that have to do with hearts. All of them are bad words. And it's not the lack of sleep. It's how bright it is in the room. Because big part of sleeping mm. is that you sort of set your internal chronometer yeah. right. and that ch changes when hormones are released. It tells your heart when it can slow down and take a chill pill mm -hmm. for a while before ramping back up in the morning. And so if you're sleeping under bright lights, you may be messing up your mm. ability to get a full night's rest and mm. that may over the long term affect your heart. And wow. these data are just striking. I yeah. mean, just having the lights on in the room you're sleeping in. So you can imagine falling asleep while the TV's on. Because on our shift, that kind of happens. It yes. Does. Which makes yes, me but think you're a keeping, lot about the, it. The, the yeah. trick is you've got to keep that 24-hour cycle. And I know some yeah. people that work the crazy hours you do yeah. take, you know, a big nap during the day and they work yeah. sort of a bimodal distribution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But listen, it, I mean, all things being equal, maybe blackout blinds aren't such a bad idea. Yeah. It's easier to sleep not. in a dark room for yeah. sure. True. But falling asleep in front of the bright TV or something like that just not might not good. be the way to go. Infarction does sound like a bad word. It does sound like a very bad word. And we have a minute to get into how sy sycophantic AI is making us into worse people. I, I didn't think that was possible. I know. Well, you social know, media humanity, makes us worse. Not just the three of us. I mean, <laughs> yeah, the three of us are yeah, terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So social media is bad because it makes people meaner than they are in yeah, real life. Right. AI seems to have some funny quirks, too. One of the things AI does is whatever you tell it anything, it says, that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, I know. It's oh, so my agreeable. gosh, I never thought that you could do that. Like yeah. making a balloon out of bricks? Yes, let's find a way to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. And let's make a business out of it, right? And you're like, yeah. oh, that was a dumb yeah. idea. You should have right. just said so. So what they did for this study is they took a whole bunch of uh, it, things from uh, Reddit. Reddit has this whole subreddit about 
am I the jerk in this mm. situation? And mm. they picked the ones where the person definitely was the jerk, and okay. humans all agreed on it, and then right. they showed them to AI. Right. AI, more than 50% of the time, says, no, you're not the jerk <gasps> at all. And, so, and then they looked at how people reviewed a, a scenario if they read it through a scenario, mm. and they were told, here's how, if they read the AI version of whether you're a jerk or not, or they read the human version of whether you're a jerk or not, right. and they totally see the situation differently based on the feedback they get. So the worry is, as we all use AI, it's making us think we're right all the time, mm. making us less likely to admit yeah. when we're wrong, making us less likely to find middle ground with people we disagree with. Mm. And so the world is already That's not teetering on the edge of not great there. people, yeah. but uh, yeah. AI may be oh. pushing no, it no, even it's, further. It's terrifying. I saw something online, a father testifying at a U.S. court about how uh, AI basically assisted his child in suicide. Mm. It's terrible. Yeah. Just the algorithm and how it kept feeding him these ways. Uh, anyways, very dark stuff. But yeah. Dan, thank you for bringing all these stories to light and appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Next thank week, you. Right? Yep. Okay. Sounds good.